Ah, the classic question, is the glass half full or is it half empty? If you say it's half full, then people would classify you as an optimist. If you say it's half empty, then you might be declared a pessimist. But what if you think that your glass is empty all the time? Well, then you may suffer from what is called a deficit mindset or a deficit mentality. What are we talking about when we say a deficit mentality? Well, let me read what one blogger very um, aptly describes as a deficit mindset. He says, deficit mentality is the thinking error in which we find ourselves on the flip side of the rock, the part that gets no sun. Weighed down by our choice of position beneath the heavy stone, we constantly complain that life is a burden, an unfair load that keeps us from the kind of carefree life that we perceive in others as they seem to flit about under the blue sky. Deficit mentality is never having enough. Now, I realize sometimes there are deficits in our lives. I mean, sometimes we are lacking in some things. And of course, um, we do need to seek God and, and ask him and trust him to provide for the areas in which we lack. But if we're always looking at the negative side of things, if we're always noticing what we don't have, we probably are uh, suffering from this type of mentality. And I think part of the problem is we don't have the right perspective. Um, we don't see the big picture of how good life really is for us. Um, let me give you an example of this. Uh, in 2 Kings chapter 6, we're told about Elisha, the great prophet. Love reading about Elijah, Elisha, and the other prophets of God. Um, Elisha and his men are surrounded, in 2 Kings 6, they're surrounded by an army, the Syrian army, at a place called Dothan. And it looks like they're goners. And so one of his servants, or one of his young men that follows him, cries out, What shall we do? And notice what Elisha says and what Elisha does. In 2 Kings 6, 17, listen to this. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So many times we just need to have our eyes opened as to how blessed we really are. Now, let's just talk for just a few moments uh, about defeating a deficit mentality. What are some steps that we can take in order not to always think negatively about what we don't have? Well, first of all, take inventory of what you do have. I'd say that's the first step. Take inventory. Just start to uh, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Take inventory of what you actually do have. There's something called the Pollyanna Principle. I don't know if you've heard of it. I'm just, it's been just a short while since I, I discovered this uh, principle in some of my research. And uh, this term, the Pollyanna Principle, goes back to a novel. It was written in 1913 by Eleanor H. Porter. And in this novel, in this story, she depicts uh, a young girl, and this young girl, Pollyanna, um, develops a glad game. <laughs> it's a glad game, and she starts to write down um, all the positive things in her life. She starts writing down her blessings. Now, this principle, actually, the Pollyanna principle, has been tried and found to be true that if you will write down your blessings, you know, they say have a, a gratitude diary. Maybe some of you already do that. Um, write down, if, the, if you write down 10 things every day that are blessings to you, you will become a more positive person and you will experience more joy in your life. You know, it, just by looking at the good things, um, maybe as soon as this video is over, write down five things for which you're thankful. Um, it may surprise you how much joy you'll start to have when you take inventory of what you actually have in your life. You'll see that, that life has many blessings. So take in inventory of what you do have. Now the second step is very important as well. Not only should we take inventory of what we have, but be thankful for what you do have. Take inventory of what you do have and then be thankful. Offer thanks to God for the things that you do have. 
When we grumble and we complain about what we don't have, we're sending a message to God that we don't appreciate life, that we don't appreciate Him. And as hard as it may be to believe, did you know that there are many people in this world who are way worse off than you and me? Somewhere in the world right now, there's a person who is dreaming of having your life. As bad as you may think your life is, there's somebody that wishes they could be in your shoes. You know, there's an old expression. I sometimes share this with the men at the shelter. The, the old expression is, I used to complain about having no shoes until I met someone with no feet. You know, it could always be worse. It really could. And um, I know we shouldn't revel in the fact that others suffer more than we do. But I mean, to have that kind of perspective that we do have some things to be thankful for. And we overlook a lot of the blessings, the simple blessings like, <gasps> I can breathe. You know, I'm, I'm locked up in my apartment. I'm isolated, um, you know, because I don't have anywhere to go. There's only the grocery store to go to right now during this COVID-19 pandemic. But hey... I have a place to live, you know? My rent is paid, I've got some food on the table. I mean, I can think of so many things. Take inventory of what you do have and then be thankful. Thank God for what you do have, even if it's just a little. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, Know this, it is God's will for you to express thanksgiving to God, to be thankful for everything. So if you want to overcome a deficit mindset, a deficit mentality, take inventory of what you do have, make, uh, be thankful for what you do have, and then thirdly, make use of what you do have. Make good use of what you do have. You know, using what you have can help you attain what you don't have. For instance, if you don't have enough money or you don't think you have enough money, wisely use the little bit of money that you do have and that will help you to have more money. That will open up doors and avenues for you to, to get more money. You think you don't have enough time? Use your time wisely. Redeem the time. Make good use of the time that you do have and you'll find that you'll it'll open up doors uh, avenues for you to have more time. And we could go on and on with examples of this. Um, make use of what you do have and God will supply what you need. Paul says in Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He doesn't promise to give you all your wants. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he does give us uh, our wants, things that we just simply want and, and praise him for that. But he does give us our needs. And if we make use of the little things, then God will give us bigger things. Jesus told a parable. He told the story of the talents in Matthew chapter 25. And the story of the talents goes something like this. There's a man, uh, a very rich uh, landowner, a very rich man uh, who leaves his servants and he leaves them some money to invest. So he gives a uh, five talents, and I'm not going to bother uh, making the equivalent in today's currency, but he gives five of these coins, these talents, to one of his servants, and he says, do something with this. The other, he gives only two and says, do something with this. And then one guy, he just gives one talent to. So the first guy with the five talents, he goes out and he invests and he earns another five talents. And the master is very pleased when he returns that the, the investment has been doubled. The other guy with two talents, he only gets two more talents. So that's a total of four talents. But the master is still very happy because he doubled what, what he had. But that third servant, when he was called to give an account of what he had done with that one talent... He said, Master, I know you're a man you're, that's uh, very shrewd and I was frightened that I might lose that one little talent that I had, so I hid it. In other words, I didn't invest it. And the master was exceedingly angry and, and actually cast the guy out uh, of his um, employment. Why? Because this is a story, folks, that God is telling us 
He wants us to use what we have, even if it's little. You know, there's all kinds of stories in the Bible about people who had just a little bit. Uh, I remark that many of those stories have to do with widows. Um, widows who had nothing and yet um, God used the little that they had. I think about the widow of Zarephath that Elijah um, got to know and minister to. And she had just a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil, but she obeyed God and she ended up having enough flour and enough oil to last uh, all the way through the famine. There was also another a Shunammite uh, widow that Elisha dealt with that sort of the same thing. Um, she trusted God with the little bit of flour that she had, uh, the little bit of oil that she had, and um, she had everything she needed. And of course, in the New Testament, Jesus pointed out the woman that had only two mites. Uh, in our equivalent today, it's less than two cents, but she gave what she had to God and we don't know the rest of that story, but we know Jesus blessed her. And so the, the point is, give what little you have. You know, like the little boy also who gave his lunch to Jesus. You know, he had uh, just uh, two fish and five loaves uh, of bread. And, um, you know, not, not very much. Just enough to feed a little boy. Um, but he gave it to Jesus. You know, little is much when God is in it. So um, make use of what you do have. Even if you don't think it's much, make use of it. Make good use of it. Make godly use of it. Luke chapter 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So we've got to take care of the pennies, the small things. Make use of what you do have. Are you suffering from a deficit mentality? Take inventory. Think about what you do have. Write, write them down. And then be thankful. Express thanks to God for the things that you have. Even if it's not as much as the next person. Uh, not, even if it's not as much as your neighbor. Um, thank God for what you do have. And then make use. Make good use of what you do have. And then you will have enough. You'll have more than enough. You know, Mary Poppins said, enough is as good as a feast. And we're so blessed. So I hope this will help you. Um, by the way, I happen to be a bit of a pessimist by nature. I usually notice the negative things first. And I'm continually working on it. And this lesson here is for me, probably even more for you. I don't want to have a deficit mentality. I want to be rich in the blessings of God. I don't care if I ever become a millionaire. But I want to know that God is blessing me. And I want to, I want to dwell on those things. On the blessed joy-filled life. And I hope you do too. May God bless you as you contemplate these things in overcoming a deficit mentality. Oh, by the way, it's time to drink the water. Until next time.